Okay, hopefully this recording is being recorded. Um, my camera's still up, my computer's still running. That's one of my goals tonight would be to do a complete teardown by two, move the monitor to the other side, and hopefully I have enough cables from the other boxes where I can find and hook a lot of the stuff back up, power it back up, yada, yada, yada. 10 yards, you know what I'm talking about when it comes to computers, whatever. So basically, I don't get a word on anything anymore. Okay, fine. So I gotta, actually, now I have to get the box up. Look at myself. Yeah, actually, gotta put, shoot, the power strip I got wouldn't work for what I'm trying to do. Gonna have to do a minor rewire, but oh well, it don't fudge me. Actually, I need to put that on the other side and then put the power thing on that side. Whatever. But yeah, there's a lot of other things I got to do. Uh, being a technician nerd, this was actually my dream office and having a job here. So I'm just going to recap a couple of years. Highlight 2006, I landed a job, moved back and forth every other year between the other two offices outside. And finally, they put me in a cubby hole as off as always, but it had a nice half wall. So I was able to put all my displays on the half wall and put that shelf behind me. So it was just like this. It was just uh, the shelf was a good job blocking a part of the window so I wouldn't get the light hitting the monitor. I do the same thing here too as well, but it's behind me because the sunlight comes in and hits the monitor and I can't see crap. So you fix your own problems. That's, that's uh, called being resourceful. So... I don't know, last time the light wasn't working, I went and changed the bulbs myself. I just gave up with those guys. They didn't fix my lights for years, whatever. So much bullshit. So, you know, I didn't want them to fix the floor because if you saw under the table, there's a harness of wires that run back and forth. I'm going to be up for another hour to just cut up all the wires and toss them and whatever. I, I'm just kind of tired these days because first off, I hate to recap, one of my friends is no longer amongst the living since March. Another stupid idiot. But yeah, it's, it's a good thing about moving out of this office, this highlight first. Uh, I do want to go back to the 2010. It's the fact that that annoying sound will finally go away. But that doesn't stop there because I probably have to move the office in six months again. So let's go back to the recap. So 2006, I got work here. By 2010, I was doing the paranormal stuff. And it was great. The boss never really liked it, but okay. You know, he doesn't really realize, I, I guess what it is, is that if you're that type of person that is either passive aggressive or controlling, you don't want the other person to expand their background or knowledge. And I've seen that too. And I, I don't understand his logic, but I've seen it in the background. And he was never happy when I worked. So I tried my best to do and work my way up the ladder. I was putting together cables, working 14 hours a day to the point where someone sued the company for overtime. I remember that. I don't know how true that is. And then by 2010, my paranormal team pretty much dissolved. Well, no, we had meetings at Tom Durant, which is the demonologist slash ex-producer for Deadliest Catch. So it was a good connection still, but then people started dying. Well, cancer or whatever. By 2012, my cousin who worked here also pretty much went as well on a fatal accident. So, but she was all the way up into 2010 when I finally, because this office was empty for many years. It's like, there's a big empty office. Originally I was in the big office on the other room. Okay. I had maybe a small collection, but mostly plastic uh, McFarland stuff, which probably got tossed by the other person who grabbed it off of me for free, whatever his kid wanted it. Um, but years ago, and then I use as a server table, because I had a table just like this type of credenza. I don't exactly know what happened then because they moved it in here. If I recall, this table went into here. I don't know how they moved it, but they moved it in here. So whatever happened, I think it was, yeah, it got moved from here to the room next to David, which is the owner. And then then whatever went back and forth. I remember Ashin was the, was my supervisor at the time. And I didn't really, I was just being a technician. And then I remember David Parati was the guy that was in this office. Then he got moved to the other table and where there seemed to be closer to me. But 
I mean, really don't connect. When you talk to people in the office, there's two types of level of people you connect with. And a lot of times your office may even may have been people you connected with in the past do not connect with you at all. I don't know what the issue is, but I'm starting to learn is everyone hates the bosses. And I've always wondered why, because many times I don't like to be that boss, but at the same time, I have to get work done. I have to set up schedules. If there's an emergency, you have to handle it. That's how it works in any business and organization. It doesn't matter if the other person is, is underneath you, but being bossy comes with the job. But at the same time, it does not mean you require to do any slave labor or anything like that. So they usually get paid, whatever the case is. Um, but yeah, I was here for so many years and I realized I really like this office. I still need another day to move out the rest of the stuff. I'm trying to get as much done tonight before I pass out and just go home, sleep, get up like tomorrow morning. But yeah, 2010 to 2012, that's when I got into the furry stuff, 2010 actually, because I think I had one of those large giant dragons. If I see a picture of it somewhere in the background. And that's when it started. Now I had the collection. That was the first one I had behind me. That shelf on the other side was mostly empty at the time. But I was buying a lot of the uh, going to the Renaissance Fair. So I bought a lot of the goblets. Some of them are AP pieces, which are like 300 bucks plus, if I remember. But regardless of how it was, I started my collection. But I started meeting some interesting people at the con. They weren't as much collectors, but a lot of my website was running at the time, so I had a lot of archival stuff. So, however that went, I was doing tech stuff here as well as taking stuff apart. I was getting here probably around noonish, a lot. And if I remember 2010, and I remember the elections of 2012, watching on this computer, on this table till around 12 a.m. to see what the uh, closing election was and like oh shit obama still because it was get turning south obama fixed some of the problems but then fuck some of it up but that's politics for you you can't hope for all but you can hope for the best then 2012 came around and then traffic started to get shittier shittier so i try to spend as much time with my income um, even though I was still on a very low income and me and trigger, we were going to trips. As a matter of fact, we put ourselves in a huge debt one year. And then that's when I told my car. So 2012 was a turning point. I said, I'm going to get a car that I really like. It's a, someone suggested you should, if you like partial off road, partial on road, get yourself a Ford escape 2012 with a Mazda body chassis. I mean, so and that was so far the best car I've ever had. It had independent suspension. I can go over a nasty curve bump. Don't even harm the stuff in the back seat. It doesn't feel like the current. It's that's the shitty part of today's car is that you're making it for Californians. You're not making it for Americans. So fine, whatever. I give up with that. But I know plenty of friends in the car area now that are starting to understand that community and being loud is actually fun. Um, but please, I'm trying to work here in downtown LA, so I need some quiet that way I can think and get my thoughts together and multitask. But yeah, it's been one of those things to be blog about, but yeah, so 2010 came along, 2012, and I noticed one time I was called at a specific schedule for the office to take this IT exam for this one guy. So fine, I took it, so I wrote off on all the stuff I did. I was also taking the ITT tech, keep in mind, while going to cons. That's when I ended up with a degree that says up on this, on over here, ITT Technical Electrical Engineering Technology. That's what I worked on and graduated in class of 2014, if I remember. Yeah, April 2014. So two years had passed, and I realized my abilities was pretty adamant that I was a super tech. I could fix things. So when I started building that cool ass tail in 2015, got the idea, said I've been wanting to do this for four years. And I finally found so I could do something that was a little bit above amazing and super strong. So that's when my life really began in this unusual community of creative minds. Um, but yeah, I was convinced I was more liberal orientated, but it was great. I think the boss actually connected with me for once, which is weird because I was a hard worker, push uh, a people pusher and I got stuff done. But then at a time, no one likes, again, no one likes that boss every time. So your boss is not your friend. All he does is write your checks or approve things. That's all.
So that's when I went to try to get a different internet and all this other crap happened. I said, you signed a contract. He says, I signed a contract because you needed fiber. I, I did my research. I looked for a peering provider and I did that. Well, you could go with a bigger company. It might be cheaper. Turns out they're actually a bit more expensive, but beyond the point, there's different negotiating tactics. I have no idea how to negotiate because I was never taught to negotiate. I was taught to shop around a different perspective. So that's why I come from a different community. I don't come from the enterprise level. That's when all to 2014, 15, 16. And that's when we had a bit of change of, of uh, people working here. They finally, I don't think they found someone who's got a technical background, but I think they tried many times and most of them went off to another job. It was kind of a lifesaver to see them go off to another job because obviously I, they came here, they knew nothing about programming, nothing about SQL. And every year I adapt. I keep adapting, I keep adapting, but I notice the more I learn, my paycheck is still the same. So I go off and do the side stuff where I find on the side program. And going back to 2010, yes, I did some radio communication engineering, but it was all just practice play. So I didn't know what I was getting into. So I didn't know what to charge. I just charged my normal rates. Then I finally knew what I was getting into after I graduated. I figured out how to work great wave guides, electrical engineering properties. That's when I took it to the next level and he kind of backed off on it like, oh, well, now you're charging like a real engineer. I says, well, I am a real engineer. I mean, what says I'm not? And an engineer could be just like, what says you're not an artist for creating cartoon and cool stuff for the fandom, for this furry fandom, these cute characters. So creators in reality actually do create wealth. But the problem is applying that is extremely hard. So I didn't consider myself a creator, and that's pretty much how I got hired here because most bosses want to labor. They would just want you to get the job done and go home. I'm really bad at doing that. I want people to actually prosper and develop new things and come up with new solutions. Most people just want to use an FAQ and, as, and call tech support. I'm like, but I thought I hired you for tech support, not to call tech support. So different perspective. Learned so much in the last 10 years about that. So now that I have an engineering background, I've created a couple of products. I did that. And, and more recently, I've created a couple of toys and all this other stuff. Of course, there's a couple of other things I'm going to have to deal with, but I've got some other friends that are helping me out with that. So hopefully we can start some other, I can't say what it is, projects and maybe go to marketing and go to town with it. So. But I am trying to apply myself from a different perspective as a creator now because I'm coming to a turning point that a technician, especially customer support technician or any support technician, is basically because people make all these mistakes and people complain when some guy like me, they give me a heavy task that will take me a long time to do and I find a shortcut time. I don't always want to find a shortcut time because I do need to start learning to focus on my own mental health and get my lab together. But yeah, going to now 2016, Trump was president. I actually went traveling. I think the first time I went to Salem, we came down, took a three week break. That's where I ran into Arceus and we spent a nice week together and it was great. And I thought we had something going, but it turned out after a while, she goes, you're president. And that would get clued me in that I think this is gonna go sour and would predict, yes, it did. Because being a hard worker versus trying to find a shortcut in life, maybe I should find that shortcut, but it's not my catch. But if it does happen next time, and next time someone offers me saying, I need someone with your caliber and I'm willing to dish out money, but you're going to have to travel. I hate to say I have to drop everything I'm doing, but I can't trust my family not to move. I can't trust the office to move stuff or just say, you know what? We we decided to can you and we're going to sell all your stuff here write an agreement whatever the case is we'll, we'll issue this amount for value whatever which is kind of a killer in my mind because i don't have my own property i don't have my own place to put the stuff in this office the remnants of it that's going to go down was my home away from home Twice, I tried another office, but then again, I incurred in someone's space. One was at the radio office, I incurred in Jeff's space. So I said, you know what? I know your boss gave me a, a space here because he liked the things I do, but I'm not going to take it. The second time, I took it, but it went sour because he decided to use that in place of payment. 
which is kind of the partnership route. I'll get into that in just a second because I know this is going to be a long 20 minute conversation. So I get into that around whatever, um, yeah, around 20 minutes of that. So I, uh, so I get into that slightly later. So around 2016 or so, yeah, that's when things started to take a turn, but I was having fun doing furry with my tail. And around 2018, it soon became apparent that I do need a place of my own. Because remember, 2012, my family forced me to move out of their existing house. I had to tear up all my wires and all the cables. And I was still not happy because all the work I put in to build a tech lab, a Drake lab, or Drake's layer. So at least I got a nice office by 2010. So I figured this is going to be my home away from home. So I started working on moving stuff here and making this my resting place. So I can relax, except for the loud noises that are appearing. You think you can thank big President Obama for fucking that up. But okay, 2016, things were finally getting to normal, but we just have games that go on. They were talking about Olympics, whatever. 2018 rolled on, tried to get a house. By 2019, that's when I finally closed on a mobile home because my budget at my current wages here would limit me to about three fifty to 400000 and if you do a search, you'll never find anything of that price in SoCal or then 25, 50, 30 mile drive. Even if you go 50 mile drive, you're still looking at 500 to 600. So that's at the upper limit of what's affordable. Even if you were to find something, it just doesn't work out anymore. So it, it was clear that my, and that was a salary for 2016. Keep in mind, 2018, we try to upgrade the entire ERP system. But everyone's bugging me and then says, you got to tell the boss and no one likes it. I says, and I told him, you're going to have to ask people because you throw me in a platform. I'm going to have to work on it because you're the boss. And I was trying to put it, but I did convince him to go and upgrade my salary. And that did help out. But of course, people don't like it that I come in at weird hours after lunch and all the stuff. This traffic really sucks. If you ever come to downtown LA, it's like New York. It's at the point where you just don't want to drive. I'm going to be changing my hours again, so hopefully I can get around that. But that means I won't have time to deal with afternoon talk or any of that other bullshit anymore. I'm probably going to just crash around 2 in the afternoon and go home. But it's coming to the point where I fucking idiot is making loud noise outside because they're just doing that on purpose. It's like there's no need after 10 o'clock to be driving something very loud. Any neighborhood courtesy, 10 o'clock is quiet time. Midnight, which is after midnight, by the way, shut up and, and don't make any noise unless you're unless you're calling for help. So this is this is L.A. It's pretty much like New York. It sucks. So 2018 was the turning point. And that's why I was trying to get a house in a location. And they say location, location, location. So I picked a location closest to the freeway, closest to a neighborhood. Now I lost. Oh, yeah, high crime area. It's not really high crime, but it's actually in a pretty good 400 uh unit community so there's a they have their own security and everything that's why i picked a mobile home park because i realized i'm and the community was pretty nice they tried to help and they warned me of certain things but my mistake was as my boss said better make friends with the mexican or whatever it is so i tried that route and i got fucked so far up the hole that i think they came after me that's when i got robbed in 2019 i'm fairly certain it's the same group of people it was just a mess. So it was clear by 2020, right before the lockdown, that I don't think I was ever deserving a house or even deserve to live here. So my goal now is to just, just, just do the apartment life, build up my assets, and trump it up, as they say, because Trump did do something. And he's an entrepreneur, and I admire people with those skill sets. I didn't at the beginning. I didn't care about that stuff. I just care about making enough money, but every year it, things were getting more expensive. I started tracking my expense from 2012 to 2016 and going to the same cons and a lot of the places with friends, expenses were just going. So now with the lockdown, I cut my expenses all the way down to the bare minimum. Food's always high priority because you got to eat, but I moved around my expenses and started realizing, fuck. Yeah, California, you know, with all the stress you get here, you do need that extra plus entertainment. But is it really worth it? I, I Like I said, I fix my own things. I'm so used to not just buying and just replacing everything. That's why my 
computer graveyard used to take two years to build up enough for a recycler. Now it's like three months where it builds up with a lot of junk. And now I'm even at the point where I don't even care anymore. I'm just tossing it all out and carrying on. I mean, I did so much crazy stuff here in 2010 from some of the outages we had. I'm just at the point now that do I really care anymore? I mean, I want to go wireless now. It's secure. It's stable. Boss doesn't want to go wireless because you know, I got nothing for my guys to do. I says, well, your guys don't even pull the wires right. They use crappy cable. I can't even use half the time when I tone it. So if you want me to upgrade the system and maintain it, then we need to follow the standard. Oh, it's all a joke, whatever it is, you know. Well, there's a difference between someone who has an engineer background, which I do, and I do my research. I don't just buy the latest and greatest. I want to put it out there. I hate my new car. It sucks. It does everything for you. I want to be in control, but it's doing it all for you. But because it was a, I should say, a gift from family, I have to acknowledge that they really still want me around, but I don't think I can stand around. It may be another year or two before I go crazy. So hopefully my company has done me a favor by moving me to the inner office, but I put as much stuff in boxes in the last two days. So if we do move six months from now to another office, I can easily move there. But I need to start going through stuff. And some stuff are sellable, some stuff that's not sellable or whatever. Because whenever I try to get rid of stuff, no one wants the stuff I want to get rid of. And the stuff I want to keep because they have really they were so hard to find to begin with. And I found it. I bought it. I mastered it. I should be proud. But then a friend of mine tell you what's the most exciting part, the hunt to find the problem or finally owning something. For me, it's owning something. It's having a piece of asset, a memorabilia of history. But to my family, owning nothing is better because someday your house can burn down hurricane, whatever the case is, you lose all your assets. Well, if you have it backed by government FDIC, I just don't like to keep my asset in money because as I said before, everything goes up in price to the point where I'm going to have to keep asking for more money. I mean, I'm only, I, I have not broken double digits yet at this company, 10 years working here as a high level IT, I have not broken double digits. So I'm starting to limit my level of work that I want to do and to focus on things that just needs to get done. This office move is a perfect example. Tearing up the computer and doing the simple stuff and then just moving it over to the other room and calling it a day. My boss had mentioned something about that many times, just, just the minimum. You don't need to go overboard. And he is right, because if I do the minimum, he might sell the company the next day and he'll retire. I won't retire, I'll be stuck. That's another problem I have. Looking back 10 years, I should have been a business partner. I should have said, hey, look, when he, when he did a walk one day, and instead of a business partner, I chose the option, basically convinced him I want flex time, I want this office, and I want to be able to, you know, be able to do other things. But I also didn't realize that he expanded. Remember, 2016 is when the company took the other turn and opened the Tennessee office. And by 2018, they opened the uh, second L.A. office. It was clear that downtown L.A. was not really the best place to run this type of operation. But at the same time, it was also the best place to get everywhere. Because I could stop here at this office and shoot to north uh, to, to other, other uh, cities on my way for investigations and stuff like that. So it was a great office to actually break into. But in reality, when it became my home away from home, that was probably a big mistake. Because when you live under someone else's roof, they, they get the last say. Just like the other guy said, this is my shop. And without being any sort of partnership or anything like that, where you can co-own something, you don't really own it, you're whatever. If you do co-own it, you manage to co-own and buy it for business. You have equal say, but the other party can also kick you out. That has happened to someone else, too. So I don't know exactly how far I can do that. But all I know is that if it is co-owned, I want to make sure that that entity is separate. So if we do make the share, we can disperse the share and take off. But I will work my ass off to, to, to meet goals. I just will not work my ass off because you have to see me working. No, I'm not that type of person at all. I work smarter, not harder smarter 
And with that saying, I'm going to end it there. So there's the V blog for the weekend of 696, six, September 6th. But anyhow, it's 20 minutes long. 